All right, let's do this thing. <laughs> let's do this. Okay. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Season 3, Episodes 27 and 28. Wow, the animation is so improved. Uh, just, they have a lot of nice touches. It really shows that the new animation director they have apparently really listened to the fan criticism of the previous two seasons because there's a lot of little improvements that they did. Like characters are showing more motion even when they're in the background. Their models stay on model. Their um, facial designs are a little bit... Uh, more concise and they just feel better than the previous season they feel more i think not accurate to the manga but more accurate to design and feel of the characters than previous seasons and just everything's so much prettier and i really like the new versions of the transformations i mean i was watching this episode and like at one point i was like i'm almost having a fangasm <laughs> <laughs> I almost squealed at several points when I was watching this. <laughs> Specifically the first episode of this season. And I really find it interesting where the story is going. And you can jump in any time, Ember. <laughs> well, I thought I'd let you rave about the animation first because I'm not enjoying it as much. Not that it isn't still wonderfully animated and... You know, everything that you said is true. The proportions are better, especially during the transformation sequences. Uh, characters have more emotion. But it's lost some of that otherworldly beauty that it had from the CG enhancement. And I'm no longer, you know, open mouth drooling every time Mamoru shows up on screen. <laughs> also, there were some moments where I felt like I was watching the previous iteration of the series. Especially when Usagi and Chibiusa were fighting after the phone call with Mamoru. The expressions there and the feel of it just took me right back to the, I'm going to put air quotes there, original TV series. Not that that wasn't very accurate to the manga right down to the facial expressions. <laughs> Even the manga was not that droolingly gorgeous except for the color stills and the occasional image it had plenty of comedic and disproportionately drawn moments <laughs> and going back to animation real quick or at least the production as a whole they kind of really changed things up from what i understand and what i've read uh they got rid of the previous well they didn't get rid of they moved the previous animation director to character design now so the animation director is now strictly character design and they got a whole new staff for animation direction and other stuff that was going on which also explains their overall change in style and quality because they changed the staff around a little bit probably because of all the negative stuff they got from the previous season also the previous seasons even though it got a lot of negative critiques apparently did well enough to give this season more of a budget <laughs> so they were able to do a lot more stuff in this season at least so far with the way the animation feels to me now we should probably move on to story and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I didn't get to say that I'm not sure that I like the new transformation sequences because everyone looks like they're figure skating. I didn't really notice that. I only noticed that on Venus. Venus really looks like she's skating around on something. The others are just kind of doing ballet and pirouette moves, not really skating around. The overall feel to me was of figure skating and... That whole thing in the opening credits where they're all twirling around each other with the stars trailing off of them. Like, what are you guys shooting stars? I need a translation of these lyrics to know whether or not I like these images. I'm pretty sure the translation of the lyrics are on screen. <laughs> um, no. That's Japanese. Not in the version I was watching. There was English and Japanese subtitles. Not when you watch it directly from Viz. Huh. Maybe you should watch it on Crunchyroll, because that's where I watched it. Because there were certainly English in the titles, subtitles I were reading for the intro song. Not mine. All right, moving on to story. <laughs> well, I've never read the manga at this point, so I'll give, you, give people a point of view from someone who hasn't read the manga or even watched the original TV series at this point. I find it interesting that we're getting new Sailor Scouts 
they're being antagonistic along with new bad guys who are being antagonistic and apparently have their own, at least from my perspective, version of the Silver Millennium Crystal or whatever it's called. I'm pretty sure I butchered the name somewhere along the way. And they're like, our version's better. We should conquer this world because it has these people who were relying on it or something along those lines. I'm kind of scrambling up my memory there, but that's kind of just I got. And then we have all these new females who are like, we're going to destroy these people and we're going to use these, I think they were called demons at one point, but it's basically taking something from inside the person and amplifying it. I still find it also interesting that we're, we're getting that weird thing between Chibi Munu Usagi with tuxedo mask <laughs> like really we're still doing that 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 kind of gets old <laughs> yeah it, it it stays old and it, it doesn't go away but so far i'm liking both episodes but i just find it just like why are these do the outer Seether scouts not like the inner Seether scouts or something i can't wait to figure out what's going on with that also I know she's a female, so what's going on with her being male? I know it's a bit, little bits and pieces of what's going on with these two characters from other sources. You know, because for the show being around so long, it's hard to avoid any kind of spoilers. <laughs> so yeah, it's like we got those two and they're a couple, and I know they're both girls based on everything I've read, and I'm perfectly okay with that. But one apparently likes to be referred to as male, or everyone mistakes her as male, because apparently everyone's using a very um, non-gender term to describe her. And of course, she's also very... Pretty boy, pretty, because a lot of people, including two of the serious guys, are going, Oh my god! So pretty! <laughs> uh, and just to go back to the transformations real quick, my favorites were Mercury and Mars. <laughs> just because Mars animation just looks so freaking powerful, which is like, yes, that's what we need for Mars. Yeah, it's definitely her new one is smoother, especially her end pose, much better than the original. Mm-hmm. And I'm just interested in what's going on with these new Sailor Scouts and the new bad guys. So that's my thoughts on the story so far. Yeah, we really need to get you the second box set. Actually, you have the first box set. Doesn't that cover the first six volumes? Because we're in volume six right now. Ah, yeah, well, I only really read the first two volumes. I haven't read the rest yet. <laughs> All right, well, you could at least read volume six. And then after that, you'll just have to save up and buy the other box set. <laughs> or just continue to watch the anime, even though apparently it deviates at this point. So? <laughs> yes, in several ways, because the first chapter of Volume 6, so Chapter 27, is extremely long. So they did need to break it up over two episodes in order to give the setup full coverage. So... But it wasn't quite long enough to make it two whole episodes. Several portions in the second episode were stretched, and the second episode also added stuff that did not happen, and included several pages from the next chapter. Huh. So what are your thoughts on what they added and changed, and is the story flowing nicely to you, and all that wonderful stuff, since you have, you do have a future knowledge of the story as it were <laughs> it's flowing reasonably well and everything did stay very true to the manga still it's just some scenes were stretched not as far as say the panel of goku training in space in the manga versus the tv series but the explanation to the witches five and the offer of the rank increase was only a couple of panels in the manga the way they stretched it out in the anime was like it was several pages worth of action and it really wasn't and that section was really kind of repetitive of all of the witches five basically getting to say you would grant us that power if we do this okay we're in <laughs> but the largest deviation is the fight with the cat monster in the manga only Sailor Moon and Chibi Moon battle against that monster. But in the anime, we have all the Inner Scouts battling. Also, we had all the Inner Scouts have full transformation sequences in both episodes. So, like I said, they had to do some stretching to make this chapter into two full episodes. Because condensing it down to one... 
I think really would have been detrimental. So they had to do some stretching to get two full episodes out of it. Huh. So you're talking about that reminded me that Luna was there and or there was we got to see Luna talking to Simone at that scene, which reminded me of the fact that that is actually one thing I don't like about the new changes to designs. Luna and Artemis look weird to me in this new version. This new version, they don't know how to draw cats because Luna and Artemis look wrong and the cat that was possessed also looks wrong. They look way angular than they did in the first two seasons. They were more rounded in the first two seasons. This one, they, they feel like they've kind of made sharp corners on them. <laughs> so I find that interesting. <laughs> that was one of the few things about the designs I didn't really like. Everything else they've improved on to me. So Going back to the deviation and stretching, the first chapter of Volume 6 actually does not end with the defeat of the creature. It ends with Sailor Moon and Chibi Moon's transformation speeches. So they went into the next chapter to finish the battle. They added the rest of the scouts fighting, because hey, why not? They're nearby. And we get to show off Hotaru's healing ability. Another thing in the first episode, compared to the first chapter, that moment with Hotaru, unless I am completely misreading the art panels, was not in there. Only the one with Mamoru. Also, they didn't show nearly as much in the nightmare sequence as was shown in the anime. They basically didn't show anything. And, and this is where we're going to start seeing his ability to touch things and divine stuff from it? Um, Mamoru's ability has been previously shown in other episodes. And I was talking about the addition of a nightmare sequence for Hotaru. Where in the manga, if I'm reading it correctly, there was only one shown for Mamoru. Mm. Well, I was actually just double checking what I was remembering. Yes, he does have uh, psychometry. Uh, my pronunciation may be wrong, but the ability to touch an object or a person and read something from them. He also does have a slight healing ability. Not nearly as impressive as Sitaru's, but, you know, he's the Earth Guardian. He's got to have something. Mm-hmm. I also like our little thing here, like how I'm like, ooh, I like how newer and prettier it is, and you're like, eh. <laughs> it's our whole opposite thing again. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's still very well animated, but it doesn't look how I'm used to it looking. And normally I'm not into things that are overly CG. There's been some stuff in AMV Hell where I'm like, I want to watch that just to see how bad it is. <laughs> but they used enough in the first two seasons of Sailor Moon Crystal that it just had a touch of otherworldliness to it. And I guess I just kind of got used to that. And going back to the addition of more outer Sailor Scouts, it's kind of logical because we saw Pluto. So it's implied that there are Sailor Scouts for planets other than the inner planets. But of course the question of where they've been all this time and what's going on. Because I'm not going to spoil things for Lux. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where did they come from? Why have they been gone? I wonder if we're going to continue more seasons, because I know there's even more Sailor Scouts beyond the outer planets. <laughs> yes, it, it gets to a point where everyone's a Sailor Scout. I really, <laughs> really got lost in stars, like, unbelievably, to the point where I want to just go watch the anime online now that they've finished posting all of it from the original series. Not to mention that the final episodes have a TVMA rating. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because Yusagi's mostly naked for most of her battle because, you know, why not? <laughs> and speaking of uh, being able to watch episodes online, I found out recently that you can actually watch the first, I don't know if it's all the episodes, but you can watch at least most of the episodes from the first two seasons of Sailor Moon Crystal English dubbed if you're not really big on dis into subtitles. I did see that when I was trying to find the first episode of Sailor Moon Crystal for this season. Because Viz redid their website and I couldn't like get to Sailor Moon Crystal. I could only get to Sailor Moon. It was weird. <laughs> so, is that everything? No, just pointing out how interesting it is that Aruka and Marichu are getting so close to the Sailor Scouts when they're detransformed. Haruka's presence at the arcade and her interaction with Usagi, Mirachu's discussion with Usagi 
when uh, she comes across her playing the violin, you know, and those are specifically with Yusagi, who has that whole, I somehow am drawn to Sailor Scouts and can find them. But then you have the whole thing with Haruka coming up on the other scouts and warning them away. And not just warning them away for safety, but actually threatening them. Yeah, and you saying this reminded me of the uh, another scene I really liked where they're exploring the Sailor Scouts and Sailor Moon are exploring everything. And then they're like, oh, we, we can't really go into this school. And Usaki is like, oh, wait, I got this transformation thing transform i'm going again and everyone else is like oh no <laughs> yeah it's like really she she's got the costume but how can she possibly pull this off <laughs> like i can understand mercury being able to easily pull it off because damn girl you're smart yeah but uh, usagi not so much <laughs> yeah usagi even though this is how it went in the manga, should have handed the transformation pen to Amy and had Amy do the transformation. So, anything else you want to go over? Mm -hmm. uh, even though it's accurate with the manga, a little time travel timeline power nitpicking. Sailor Moon and Sailor Chibi Moon's brooches react to these new creatures, and that just reiterated the fact to me that Sailor Chibi Moon's transformation power comes from Legendary Silver Crystal. But if we recall, previously it was stated that the Legendary Crystal from the past will only work in the past, and the Crystal of the Future will only work in the future. And remember Prince Diamond trying to put both crystals together and destroy the entire world, and somehow that was actually a valid threat even though one, only one of the crystals should have been viable at the time. So one, we have both crystals being active in the same timeline and two we have them coming into very close contact because both girls wear them on their shirts because of their brooches and the only thing keeping those two crystals from touching when they hug is the fact that the brooches are closed ah <laughs> uh, once again i like the state how much i love your nitpicks because <laughs> they're so valid <laughs> I really like the character designs for Haruka and Mirachu. I like how we stuck with the accuracy of Haruka wearing a tuxedo-style mask and cape. Oh yeah! I was like, wait a minute, why are you doing a tuxedo mask cosplay? You're missing the hat and the Ursula outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but, you know, when I was first watching the series, I never wanted to be a Sailor Scout because of the costume. I wanted Darian, but I didn't want to be Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> and of course that was before I knew about the Outer Scouts because it took so long before those episodes made their edited way onto television. Those poor, poor ladies turned into straight cousins. <laughs> and the best they could manage to keep him was that lovely sequence of them clasping their hands together. <laughs> which is very similar to the one in the um, title sequence. I say not the title sequence, the closing sequence. At least they weren't gender bent to being male in the American broad, uh, to being female in the American broadcast. No, we save that for the villains. Because <laughs> we still have another villain coming up who was previously gender swapped. Ah, well, I like both episodes, and I'm definitely looking forward to more. I really appreciate the new tweaks to the animation, and the only thing I, as I said before, I didn't really like was the way they're drawing Luna and Artemis now. But overall, it seems interesting. I wonder what other tweaks they're going to do, because I can't wait for Ember to tell me about them. <laughs> <laughs> overall, I'm looking forward to more, and I'm really enjoying this new season, and I do hope we get more after wherever they're planning on ending this arc. I hope so, too. I would really like for them to actually do all 12 volumes, plus the bonus volumes. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal Season 3, Episodes 27 and 28. Thanks for listening. What's one more channel on your account? Please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lux's art? You can check out his Patreon or check the link below for commission availability.